Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. Let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 228 is with Will McFadden from the podcast Hashtag Storytime. Hey, I am, I'm alive and well. I'm awake at this this, this <laughs> bright and early hour of 6 a.m. See, I, I, I say that usually around about 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm, I'm awake. and <laughs> we, we live very different lives. Yeah, oh, my God, yes. And I'll tell you what, it, it'll affect you for the rest of your life. Because I doing morning show radio, I had to be up at 2.45 a.m. And so and that meant oh going to God. bed by 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. Right. And so then you're eating dinner at 3 p.m. Oh, yeah. Like an old man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, you know, you, you hit the grocery store with all the old people. <laughs> yeah. You call it supper at that yeah, point. Yeah, you do. I got to ask you with, with hashtag story time, do you find yourself being the silent wolf? In other words, you watch life, you feel things, and you go, that's got to be a story. Um, I think I'm a pretty loud wolf, actually. <laughs> um, cause I, cause I, 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 I do find myself, retelling a lot of stories and and all yeah I, I think you know i i do look for that that content that is part of life um but yeah you know i think uh i think we all have great stories to share and they don't need to be you know some epic yeah. uh tale that 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 spans years and years they can be small moments that happen you know in, in 10 seconds where you're where you're fundamentally changed uh, before and after that that moment. I think those those make great stories. So I think there's every day, you know, I love to at the end of the night to go, what was the best story that I had from today? <laughs> yeah. you know? Well, I, I, I'll i take that. But I, what I do is I, I do a defrag journal I'll, and then I, I defrag the day to find out, OK, that, yeah. well, that was enjoyable. OK, what did we learn from this? How can we turn this into something that creates more conversation instead of just, hey, what are you up to? Right. Yeah. And that also really helps if you ever get arrested and they're like, where were you the night of January 28th? And you're like, actually, <laughs> let me show you the timestamp in my defrag journal. <laughs> kind of detailed breakdown. My alibi is, is airtight. You, you talk about that everybody has a story, but I'm so afraid that 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 a lot, a lot of people want to turn it into something that rhymes or has rhythm. And, and, and I love me some Taylor Swift, but you don't have to write a song to share your story. No, no, you know, and some people shouldn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, you know, I I think uh, as long as there is a beginning, middle, and end to it, and especially the end part, that's the important yeah. thing. <laughs> a lot of people uh, have trouble with editing, you know, and they they add a lot of too much, you know, too, you got to trim the fat to the story, keep it to what really is necessary, keep it tight, keep it lean. And then wrap it up. Leave the audience wanting more, you know? Yeah, I wish somebody would teach Marvel that. But when you go to a Marvel movie and it just keeps going, you go, please, end this well, thing. You know, they, there was just an article that came out that Avengers, they cut 45 minutes of Thanos getting the Power Stone. So they do, they even, you know, even what we see, they've somebody has cut down. Wow. So let's let's talk reality here. TikTok is under attack. And, and I really do worry about people like Adam Ray, because, I mean, Montana said over the weekend that they, we're done. We're going to we're going we're gonna to cancel TikTok in this state. Mm -hmm. is, what what yeah. about someone like Adam Ray? What What is going to be the reach, the next reach for people? Uh, you know. We, we we you know I I work with a lot of social media talent and a lot of a lot of TikTokers, um, and yeah, it, it is it is scary for them because it is a a big part of their of their income. Yes, and, you know they they would be losing a big chunk of their of their reach and their their brand deals. Um, but we always talk to the talent that we work with, and you know really encourage them to diversify and and make sure that they have audiences on as many platforms as possible because uh, you know elon musk could take over this platform yeah. and drive away all the advertisers yeah, yeah um mark zuckerberg could uh really pivot towards the metaverse and then we're just stuck there so you know you never know what's going to happen with any of the platforms but but uh you know i think the the lifespan of any short form video creator they have to have a an exit plan and a lot of them are really young too mm -hmm. and don't even know what they want to do <laughs> they're 16 years old but you can i think you can only make tiktoks or youtube videos for for so long and then you have to evolve into what's the next phase of that you know you know i totally get that even even with podcasting where we are today uh versus where i was in 2012 when i discovered this connection it's like oh my god it's it's, it's two yeah. completely different journeys yeah 
Yeah, it's easy to it's easy to burn out on it too. Oh so my being, god, <laughs> being a creator and you know and and talking into a microphone for hours and hours and hours every day, like it can start to drive you a little crazy. Do, do you see it differently though? Because you are a storyteller. I mean, I I realize it, it is a microphone, but on the opposite side of this, there there are two ears. I don't see a group of ears. I just see two ears. Hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, it'd be weird if I had a group of ears. Um, <laughs> I mean, because it, it's such a connection to people and with people. And, and it's yeah. like, you know, it's like one, one of my essential jobs is being in the center of people. And, and what I do is I listen to their stories and, and it's like, yeah. oh, my God, I now have content. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a big theater guy. Like I nice. love I love theater acting. I love being on stage. I love being in a room with real humans um you know it's the oldest art form we got it's it's a, a shared experience like you said it's like a it's being in a room of people and um i think you know that for me that's that's the best storytelling uh but you, you know the the this podcast that hashtag storytime came out of the pandemic where i couldn't get into a room full of people mm-hmm. it was very dangerous to be in a room full of people um and that was kind of how this was all birthed was still to be able to tell tell each other stories and these are real uh anecdotes from people's lives they're not like made up fi- you know fictional stories um but just a way of sharing stories with each other where we couldn't get into you know go to a, a story slam like the moth or something like that yeah it was it really was like the old days of my great grandparents where in the, where they sat around the radio because I remember during the lockdown times we we turned off the TV we would turn down the lights and we would just listen to podcasts it was it was a place of yeah. just letting go and letting your imagination have something to hold on to instead of worry yeah I'm I'm a big uh I love listening to podcasts or, or audiobooks in the car. That's my, that's like my safe space. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I'm, I'm out in Los Angeles and most people are driving around full of rage and I'm like, people are telling me a story right now. Like I'm, I'm having a great time. <laughs> I'm relaxed. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. And, uh, yeah, it, it keeps me, it, it just, it's a nice warm blanket on my brain as I sit in, bumper to bumper 405 traffic yeah because i i talked with mark and brian and they uh they both of them said that the thing that they had during their heyday in los angeles was that they had the attention of people for up to three hours and he goes yeah. modern day radio doesn't have that we may get five minutes and so he is really into podcasting because you do have the attention for a longer period of time yeah it's it's kind of the opposite of tiktok where the the attention span is there people are really dedicated to to sitting down and listening to a nice long chunk of content you know it, it the the fear is always that we're just getting more and more you know our our all of our collective uh, ADD is just is just growing and growing but it it is nice that that people um can sit and listen to you know a two or three hour podcast or i mean my favorite is when there's a road trip and we get to just knock out you know like eight episodes of a true crime podcast yeah yeah what about those true crime podcasts because i mean yeah i i I love them because there's drama we get a dopamine hit from our our fear kicking in and then going wait a second oh this is that's not me i'm 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 fine i'm i'm in my you know i'm in my car right now i'm in bed just uh listening to the horrific my my girlfriend loves true crime podcasts and she listens to them right as she's falling asleep and oh you know like God. i'll hear from one stray earbud you know like and the woman's body was found on the side of the road with 78 stab wounds i'm like how is she just sleeping to this? this is horrific <laughs> yeah and what are, what's in her dreams what is she seeing inside those dreams i don't know she often has nightmares and i you know I'm, i think i know what the problem is <laughs> lonnie martz the the links that people will go through to create a moment i mean everybody wants to hold on to a moment but man we will we will take chances to get there <laughs> yeah L- lonnie uh lonnie's a great guy he's a really funny storyteller too he told a great story on the podcast about uh there's this big social media convention in in orlando called playlist live and he uh, he, he was like a, a new kind of TikToker, new mm-hmm. creator, just kind of getting started. And he, he found a way to sneak into, to playlist live. Um, he, he like laminated a badge and went to Kinko's and like did Photoshop and made this whole thing. And then had his friend come in a business suit and act like security to let him in. <laughs> it was an elaborate ruse that he, 
that he went to to sneak into a social media convention. Oh, my God. Because all the way through that episode, I was able I had memories of sneaking into a Rolling Stones concert. We had one ticket, but four <laughs> of us got into the box. How did you pull that off? Well, it, all we did is we 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 just acted without question. In other words, we I, I would sit there. I held. I this is back in the day before they used the little boop boop little scanner, and so yeah, we, yeah. I just kept holding up the ticket, and they just kept going. Okay, come on in, come on in, and 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 it was so funny because the the it was it happened to be one, a, a stopping point for one of the mayors of Charlotte, and he stopped mm-hmm. in there. We're all in there just partying down while while the Rolling Stones were playing, and and it was just it was just fun to be in this moment that really should not have taken place. It's the old just walk with confidence yep. and uh, don't slow down. It helps if you dress like a pilot too. I think yeah, that was on yeah. the thirty. Rocket, well, we so. had we had great looking radio station shirts on, and so maybe that maybe that was enough to convince him. I was like, oh, he's with the radio station. Let, let him yeah. through. He's they're doing a promotion. Yeah, that's it. That was smart. That was like a big distraction where you're like, look at my shirt, not at my <laughs> ticket. I, you know, I did the same thing at Disneyland actually. Where <laughs> Disneyland has this racket now where. As soon as you walk in the gates, they're like, you have to pay for the genie pass. And it's basically if you want to uh, skip any of the three hour lines, right, right. you sign up for this like line skipper thing. But you can even when you pay the sixty dollars or whatever, then you can only sign up for one uh, one ride at a time or something. Mm, mm. So I had used mine and then my friend signed up for the Star Wars ride and he went up. And he beeped his, and he was like, "Just like we'll just keep walking fast, and the guy won't say anything." <laughs> and there was there was kind of a confusion, and then he beeped mine. It didn't go, but I just kept walking. And then my friend behind me did the same thing, and then he was like, "Hold on, wait a second. There only one of you guys worked." And we were like, "Oh, well, now the, uh, we got to wait out here while he rides the ride." And we just kind of like didn't move, and the line got held up. And he was like, "All right, okay, just go, just get out of here." <laughs> Yeah, because ninety nine point nine percent of all security, they're just human beings. They're they're just regular people that have a suit on. That's it. Yeah, yeah, they have anxiety too, and so when a line of angry, you know, genie pass holders are start grumbling, they're like, ah, "Just go, forget it. Who cares? It's not worth it." The episodes of the podcast hashtag story time, they're perfectly timed out. How you know what what kind of uh, you know? There, there's a lot of strength in making sure that it's time to wrap it up. Is it something that you feel, or is it something you go look? Listeners only have about thirty minutes. That's it. We have right. to. That's that's our stopping point. Yeah. Well, I think that's all the time we have today, Arrow. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think. Um, I mean, we have a great we have a great editor. Uh, shout out to uh, Tony Maddox, who's our sound sound editor. Um, so he cuts out all of my bad jokes, which definitely uh, <laughs> tightens things up. But no, I think I, you know, I think that's one of the one of my jobs as the host is to is to get, to help drive the the story and keep it on track and to keep. I mean, I love a good tangent, but if the whole thing becomes a tangent, then yeah. we've lost the thread. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and just trying to, like I said earlier find that that beginning middle and end and uh no yeah no when it's over oh yeah that little voice in the back of your head that's going stop making it about you stop making it about you this isn't about you <laughs> i mean that's honestly i so on, on the podcast i listen to people tell their stories and i never get to really tell my stories and i'm always like oh i, well, I got a thing that <laughs> I, I relate <laughs> relate to that story i like to no nobody cares <laughs> how did you dig in to get the story with lucky yates and burt reynolds Oh my goodness, um, uh, Lucky Yates! If you're not familiar with Lucky, he's a he's an amazing voiceover talent, and he's you know he's been on shows like Archer, and um, you know he he told this great story about I can't remember he was hosting an awards show, and he, he even himself was like I don't know how I got this gig like why why I was up there doing this but he was he was doing a uh, he had this monkey puppet that was hosting the show. <laughs> And, you know, when you have a puppet, it kind of gives you carte blanche to say uh, really weird stuff. And so he was really going for it. And Burt Reynolds, I guess, won an award and uh, got up there and didn't like what the monkey puppet was saying and grabbed Lucky Yates's hand and tried to break his hand. Oh, my God. <laughs> and all Lucky, Lucky said, all he could think of in that moment was, Burt Reynolds is so weak, such a weak <laughs> old man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's quite a feather in your cap to be like, I got in a fight with Burt Reynolds I guess. <laughs> and survived. <laughs> Do you see yourself as a journalist at all or, or, or are you just downright, I am a storyteller? Uh, 
I, I like to think of myself as a story hunter because that God, just that's that great. sounds cool. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> no, I don't really think of myself as a as a journalist. I feel like that puts too much pressure on me to to um, deliver truth and <laughs> there's a lot of responsibility that comes with journalism and I don't want any of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I like to lean more into uh, yeah, into being a, a storyteller and a story hunter. <laughs> I feel the same way about going back to modern day radio where you just talk over the song intros. I go, no, I, I can't do something in 12 <laughs> seconds. That's just not in my nature anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought my family was the only one that played with Ouija boards during slumber parties. I mean, and, and then to hear this one, it's like, oh, my God. And those boards <laughs> still scare the hell out of me. Uh, they're not allowed in my in my house um, <laughs> my, my mom at a young age was like don't open gateways to other realms That's right uh, i was like yeah mom that makes sense i guess i'll i'll heed that but yeah you have that in, in common with uh mccall marabella who was a who told the story about she i think she was 16 and she had like a ouija board party at her parents mm -hmm. house mm -hmm. and she invited a ghost in a, a, a ghost child which are the worst types of ghosts um because they're the creepiest and then you know i guess uh, it's normal in Ouija board practice where you're supposed to ask the ghost to leave after mm -hmm, talking mm -hmm, with them. Mm -hmm. She didn't do that. And she just ended the session. So the ghost stayed and now her parents house is haunted. I totally believe that. I absolutely, I, dude, I burn sage inside this, in, inside this studio all the time because I, I believe I brought something into this world. I wasn't supposed to, and it will not go home. What, what what was it? It's well, I believe because because I, I study Native American spirituality. I went to a sacred ground that's about four miles from here, where they lived underneath the rocks, and it's still very visible. And it's a monument now. And and I believe oh. that I went there with my writing, and I I basically befriended this 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 spirit. And so I said, well, entity, yeah yeah, be my guide, be my be my spiritual leader. And and so sometimes I feel like I'm getting knocked upside the head where he's going, hey, that's not the way we do things. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I wish I had one of those. It, it, well, they're available. All you got to do is open your heart, buddy. They're, they're there. Because I, I always envision Russell Crowe with Beautiful Mind, with the, with the people that were walking beside him. Only he could see uh, them. Yeah. And I think that we're all like that, but you've just got to learn to recognize it. Right. Yeah. Or be schizophrenic. <laughs> <laughs> that helps, too. <laughs> For listeners, how often do you update the podcast? Well, first of all, I love the idea that you have so many up there that you give people the variety. But the problem is you got I, I'm the one that has to start at the very beginning because I, I think it's oh, a transition. No. <laughs> start at the beginning, which is on the bottom, and make your way to the top. Started at the bottom. Now we're here, to quote uh, Dr Drizzy Drake. Um, it's really funny, actually, if you start at the beginning of the podcast because – it's changed so much. Yes. Uh, we were really doing a, a kind of a more narrative. Uh, and uh, I was playing a little more of a character early on where I was this kind of loser who lived in my mom's <laughs> basement. And, um, and and I was I would also kind of go on the journey of uh, the stories. We used to have multiple stories in an episode. Now we tend to focus on one story. Mm -hmm. um, but so if three of the stories were all about uh like embarrassing moments i would go to my middle school where i had all of my embarrassing moments and recount some of those things but it was this kind of silly journey that i would take you on of the stories but as you know uh doing that every week for a podcast is hard yes so yeah we, yeah. we had to kind of streamline <laughs> and um and it became more of a straight up interview style storytelling podcast so it's, it is very funny if you start at the beginning because the, the podcast evolves and changes to the, the format that it is now, which is something that we can produce weekly and, and upload. We are we're doing new episodes every Wednesday with a guest. And then every once in a while, we sprinkle in uh, an episode with my my best friends slash producers who I pay, uh, Jason and Daniela. And we we tend to find great stories on Reddit. Yes. And yes. We, we pick a theme and then we do a Reddit read episode. So we actually just uh, we just um, recorded one yesterday and it was all about music festivals and, and Coachella because Coachella first first weekend just happened. So we thought it'd be fun to absolutely, to, to, you know, here's some, some horror stories from music festivals. Wow. Will you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. I love having a conversation with you. <laughs> Oh, my, I, hey, we, maybe we do it uh, at 
uh, yeah. on you know West, <laughs> PST time, I'm down. I do. I'm that, here. I do that with the rock stars, man. I the, I'll, my most of my interviews with the rock stars are usually 7 p.m. at night, and I have to keep reminding myself that's mid afternoon <laughs> to them. It, it, don't don't complain about this. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't slept right, so it's what time is it? <laughs> well, you be brilliant today, okay, sir? You too. Thank you so much, Errol.